Okay, so uh, morning, uh, here we are. We have traveled down to Weymouth, uh, one of my old stomping grounds in the, uh, the circuit times. And uh, we're up early because today we are meeting a special sailor. So uh, yeah, watch this space and let's see how we uh, get on. But an early morning for us. traveling around uh, Weymouth. Uh, Weymouth. Have you ever been to Weymouth? Uh, well, as you may or may not know, Weymouth held the 2012 uh, Olympics uh, and they spent a lot of money prior to that really making Weymouth really sailor friendly, both sailor and windsurfing and all that. And uh, so uh, back in the day when I was kind of racing, we really saw the benefit of, uh, uh, of Weymouth having all that money spent on it at the Portland Bill uh, and made our lives easier. And so I spent a lot of time down here, uh, love this place. And this road right here, we're basically going round the back of Weymouth to go to Portland Bill. And uh, this road, after traveling down seven and a half hours in my team bus, which would do about 60 miles an hour, big bus, 30 foot bus, I'd be coming around here going, thank God, we're just about there. And you'll see the view in a few seconds as we go. We're heading towards the kind of posher, I think end of Weymouth, I'm not sure, but I think it is, uh, before we then hook a left and head to uh, Portland. So if we look left, kind of, we, we might see something we might not. It's around about here. You tend to see a few glimpses of the bay. So let's just uh, wait till we get to the next hill along. Uh, and this place, so you've got Chisel Beach, the wind blows from the southwest, we just talk until we get to the next bit. Chisel Beach, it blows across, goes over Chisel Beach and then goes into Weymouth Bay. Shallow when it's uh, low tide, uh, flat water, really good for learning any kind of foiling, I just think it's absolutely delicious. And I've forgotten my foil today. And uh, well, I've got my foil, forgotten the board. Uh, here we go, have a quick look to the left. So here we have Chesil Beach to the right, Weymouth Bay to the left. The big lump in the background is Portland Bill uh, Naval Base. They have like a comms bit there. I don't actually know what they do. And uh, I think there was an army base, I think, there at some point. So we're coming around the back. We're now going to hook a left and we're going to go down. But the, but the wind comes over there and it's really good, consistent wind. Weymouth's uh, Speed Week is, is held here annually in, in October. I used to be a regular down here, coming down here, where you can enter anything. You can enter a bathtub into that and go down the course to see how fast you could go because it was all about, of course, you had the fastest time of the week and, and things like that, but, uh, but it was all about you against yourself. So you were out to get the fastest time you could get. Uh, and we had some proper eccentric guys go there. I don't know his name, I can't remember his name, but it was a guy with long hair and he'd turn up in this like canoe sailboat thing which well barely floated but it did and he would go out and we'd all watch him and uh, then they'd retrieve him back because it begun to sink and uh, and then other vehicles uh, or boats we had here was Mirrorboard uh, which 15 years ago it was a, uh, like a 35 foot foil boat. Now, nowadays you go foil boat, and yeah, okay, whatever. Back then, this was just like, what? And this thing turned up and uh, I tried, I was doing the filming that year for, uh, uh, for the event. And uh, I remember having a speed boat and uh, like a 12 foot pole uh, as like a gimbal and trying to keep up with this thing. And it's only blowing 10 knots and this thing was gone. So absolutely fantastic. So if we look in front now, we'll see we've come around the back and the big lump of land you'll see in the distance there, that is Portland there. Okay, so uh, it's kind of basically sticks out into the, uh, 
into the sea and to our left there was Weymouth Bay. You won't see a lot to be honest, it's all houses, so you won't, you won't actually see it. But when we get there, suddenly it'll appear, but I'll show you in a couple of minutes when we get there. So we're now here, we are at the Sailing International Sailing Academy at Weymouth. And it's fantastic, loads of trailers. These are members who carry all their kit down here. And this is where we used to come down, rig up, we used to park on this area here. This is where we that really takes me back. We used to, sorry, the wind's gonna come in as well. Uh, so we used to rig up here, and we'd be down at seven o'clock picking up, ready for the event. But we are now gonna meet one of the day superstars of Slark. Who is it? Well, there's one guy who's been smashing up the BSA for the last three years. And I'm now gonna meet you. Okay, so guys, we have now come into the OTC, uh, well, depths of their Emporium. I'd say it's, it's nuts. And uh, so, as I said before, uh, Scotty Stallman is here with me, mate. This is the first time we've officially met. I yeah. kind of go all over meeting all kind of guys. And you know, the funny thing is, one guy who has been on my radar for years. So just, just so you guys get a little bit of background, uh, uh, you are BSA, you're now, you've now done your first PWA yep, yep. event. Uh, uh, so uh, regards to BSA, I was just leaving it as I heard about, this is your introduction, this is, right? Yep. Uh, uh, this this guy that Tris was kind of saying, this guy called Scotty Stallman. And it's just like, ooh? And uh, oh, he's, he's just like, unbelievable. And so with that, we just we kind of cast an eye to the side and go, who's this guy? And the thing that, uh, hit me was there's this young lad and he was sailing like a demon you could see he was uh, and uh, so wind on probably seven eight years something like that and here you are number one you won last year uh, third previous year I think it yeah. was and then fifth the year before so, so the year before I think I was second and then the year after that I was third and then obviously we had a year out due to Covid yep um, and then this year it was just a bit hard and bang that's it, I knew what I wanted to do. Dinsmore's pissed, I bet you are. <laughs> and uh, so, fantastic. So now you, you, you're you here, but what I want to dig into is the whole background of this. So yeah. uh, uh, let's wind back a few years. How old are you now? I'm 20 years old. That's nuts, that is nuts. We were just saying off camera about how it feels like you've been around the scene miles longer than this. And yet here we have a guy who, you know, you still have no fear. You've got a long way in front of you. So it's just interesting to see Testament to Tris best how early he saw you because uh, it just feels like you've been around ages. Mm. Uh, so tell us the story. You, what got you in a windsurfing? What got you? Yeah, so I think it all really started when I was at home one day and then in the garden there's this old big windsurfing board, but it's massive. And I was always like, what is that? Is that a surfboard? Like, I want to take it surfing. Can I try it? Yep. Like, obviously, when I was around nine, I was. And what? That's your dad's one. That's like, my dad's old yeah. one. Like, dad, yeah. dad did windsurf, but he never really. Probably windsurf, like he did it for a little bit and like longboarding. Yeah, exactly. Like proper old that. school. Yeah. I was like, what's that? Is that a surfboard? Like, I remember I was like, I just want to try everything. I was like, played rugby, played football. I was like, do you want to try That's it? That's what kids do. Yeah, I was like, I just want to try it. So I was like, right, I, said, oh, I want to try that. Can you take it out? And Dad's like, oh, I'm not really sure. That's um, okay. Gonna be so he rigs this thing up for you, I guess. Yeah, we had literally out in the garden. He's like, I don't have a sail, don't have anything. Like, it's just a board now. Yeah. And he's like, I think we need to relook really it. Doing something different, like go and find some newer kit. Okay. And then sort of through word of mouth. Yeah, then sort of through word of mouth we found um, found the OTC. Obviously it's only been around for a couple of years. So you live near Weymouth, yeah? Yeah, so I live in Chickrell and from okay. get here it's about a 10, 15 minute drive. Fantastic, how convenient is that? Yeah. So it's superb. But if wake up it's windy, I can drive down and go. So you come down, uh, find OTC and uh, he, you jump on the kit, and I guess you go out. You, know, you said something. W was that formula board with the first board you got? No, so it was just okay. normal, regular, like, right? Learn a windsurfing kit. I think it was a Nash Kailua and like a two. You even remember the first board? You I wouldn't have yeah. a clue what the first board I yeah, was. Yeah, it's Nash Kailua. And no two, idea. Two point five touching kids, like the orange cell. Yeah. Remember that? that was like that was my ninth birthday. Nuts. Nine. Think about that. So nine years old, you come out, and I guess you get the bug. Yeah, like I had my first session, and I just remember it being like, 
oh, okay, this is quite fun, this is cool, like you go out on your own, take yourself sufficient, like you're going out, turn around, come back, that's your goal. Yep. So I was like, right, that's cool, I'm really enjoying this. Like, and obviously like, Trish was super supportive. Mate, that's, like, that's the goal for some of us. <laughs> 53. <laughs> so, so you do that and then and then so we wind on so you get the bug you come down and what you start using Tris's kit just to yeah, uh, so free ride yeah yeah exactly so like progress sort of through the learning and starts playing and I was like okay this is really cool like, what's the next step and hold like, on seminal moment and when you first play yeah. it's just like whoa I, remember, I think I was just like going along I was my first go on some free ride kit yeah I had a harness so I've used it a little bit and then yeah. I really like properly used that hooked in had that gust and it just went and I was like, I, mean, I was just screaming down that first <laughs> run into the set. I was like, wow, this is amazing. And I'm pretty sure after that, I went out for my next run and just got absolutely smashed. Like, well, that it, it was so windy, just, yeah. We get the rush and then we get yeah, smashed yeah, up. Didn't, didn't have, yeah, just didn't. I was like, oh, well, that's, well, I've done it once. Now I'm fine to do it again. What's going on? But that, but that hooked you, I guess. That was, that that was, was the thing like, where you just go, that, yeah, oh my that God. That adrenaline was just like, okay, right, this is cool. I'm going to yeah. do it more now. And I'm pretty sure that week I was down like most days. Now, so you come down and you then progress because one of the things I was going to say is that I know what fed through to us within the industry about this Scotty Stolman who was then being banded around was just how committed you were. You were down day in, day out. And in fact, uh, for me, so I was up in Norfolk and you couldn't really do a great deal apart from when you went to the events. I was watching this lad. He was day in, day out. You were doing the groundwork. You were doing the long, hard slogs. It didn't feel like it to you, I guess. No, I think at the time I was just like, this is just so much fun, I just want to keep doing it. Like, there was never ever like, a, I'm doing this to achieve something. I think at the, at the time I was just like, I love this feeling, it, you can't match it, I just want to do it. Yeah, funny, isn't it? So you're doing it for the, for the love of it, and, uh, uh, and yet you're doing the groundwork, which sets you up uh, to be probably, I would say, uh, the, I'm gonna take a punt here, but I think the youngest uh, BSA champ there has been, I don't think there's been, been one, I, I can't remember one. So you're doing the groundwork, you're getting those hours in, which is what it takes. Uh, uh, and so when's the moment when you then were introduced to your first slalom kit? Because it's a massive change going from a free ride sail to a fully canned reflex or whatever it was you started off on. Yeah, so I think massive. the first experience was coming down here when it was super windy, I had my 3.7, rigged that up, I, I must be actually stacked. And I, on a windy day here on a southwesterly, Port Harbour can be such a good speed spot. Yeah. And obviously quite a few years back, there was a massive speed scene here. So everyone- I just got a speed week. Yeah, exactly. Annually. Like speed week, and then on a good southwesterly, everyone would be putting their fastest times in. Yep. Obviously I went out, and like, I can't remember being like thinking, oh, I wanna go out on this windy, 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 windy. Everyone's like, no, you can't go out. And I was like, right, I'm going out. And then okay. I think Tris, under Tris's watch your eye, I was like, right, go out for it, 40 knots, try your 3.7. <laughs> I remember I went out from the centre up to the course and just rode down the course. And I was like, oh, this is the quickest I've ever been. Yeah. And then sort of did that a couple of times. I got to know the locals, like Pete Young, Kev Greenslade. And then like, I was like, oh, this is really, really fun doing this speed stuff. And then like seeing all their posts they were doing about going hitting 40 knots. I was like, that's crazy. Like, maybe I'll give that a go. And then- You were well, how old at this point? I reckon I was 13, 14, okay. maybe. All right, okay. Yeah, 12, 13, around there. And then um, one day, Pete, it was, wasn't was a very windy day. Yep. I remember it was low tide. And Pete Young turned around to me and said, here you go, here's my five meter speed sail. Here's my 54 wide speed board. Yep. Just go and give it a go. Went out and I was like, wow, this sail's amazing. It's so locked in. Like, it's my first time on a full cambered sail. Yep. Sat there and just went, I was like, wow, this feels unreal. And I remember I bore it off and I think I hit like 24 knots. Yep. It gave me a GPS and all, and I was just like, 24 knots, that's amazing. Like, yep. I want to do more now. Totally. Next session, 25. Next session, 26. And I remember there was a long period where I was just, every session, I was hitting 29 knots. 29 knots, 29 knots, 29 knots. I remember Trish was like, all right, he's got to go for it. And then one day. But hold on. 30 knots has always been one of those, like, seminal numbers where yeah. you get up to 30 to break the 30 knots and you break into like a new level of speed don't you yeah because exactly. because the the margins you've got to learn the narrow margins that break you through that so yeah. i can i can kind of get that yeah i remember it was just like i don't remember i was 14 it was a bit more west in the wind on this day and it was a yeah. busy day in harbour and i was like right this is there i'm gonna do it and then pete young said to me i'm gonna go stand in the water and you're gonna come past me and i'm gonna shout you what to do 
Yeah. I remember first run went past. I was like, not feeling very good. Second run went past, hit thirty knots, and that was it. I was like, okay, wow, this is amazing. But I remember like Pete was probably said the water there, and I went past him. Thirteen years old. Yeah, thirteen or fourteen. No fear. Yeah, I literally went straight I tell you past what, him. Fair play for all those guys uh, for letting you jump on their three grand's worth of kit. Yeah. That if you bailed it out, normally you go straight through it, uh, and. Uh, so they trust you with that. Uh, I suppose the benefit you also had is that because the 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 night that's the lovely side of it. When you hit that you, yeah. and you, you hit that speed, it's great. It's massive. Should we just cover the the grind out hours of rigging your sail? Yeah. So when I used to do it, and you'd rig the early reflexes, they were coming in with the living wing and all that kind of stuff, and we're trying to work out how all that stuff. Uh, worked and you'd be up at seven to rig five sails for a slalom event and you'd just about be ready by the time Bob called up past nine ready to race uh, now so uh, you then had to learn all that stuff you came in what's the first sail that you went on with Severn first sail was the reflex eight okay six, so the six. last of the reflexes yeah uh, so uh, and then we went on to, to, to Max, which to me were a, a, a big step change again. In as much that it was a, a really stable sail, but much easier to, 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 to rig up. Uh, whereas I just found all the reflexes really, really sensitive. Yeah. And if you put them in the wrong hands, they weren't a lot of cop because they just didn't work properly. Uh, so you learned how to how to rig that up, and you're now so you're now fully uh, Severn and Starboard. Yep. Yep. Uh, you're using what sails? Uh, so the Mac 4s at the moment. Okay, so you then went on to fully canned sails. So talk us through, you went through your first moments, you then get your first sails. Yeah. What happened? So that was it, I think I sort of started doing a bit of speed sailing, really enjoyed it. And I started sort of borrowing kit and sort of, I think I, we must have bought my first sails, which must have been a 5.0 and a 5.4, I think it must have been a North Wharf or something. Yeah. And those two sails are my only used sails. Yeah. Whatever wind was, I went out on them. And then I remember coming to the first UK event we did here. Yep. And I rocked up one day and I was like, oh, what's going on here? Like, there's a lot of people there, it's pretty busy. And I think Tristan around said, yeah, it's a, it's a slalom event. They've got a fleet called the Master Blasters. Yeah. Go give it a go. Yeah. So I went out on my... And just to give a background, so Master Blasters, you just rock up with any kit. Yep. There, is, you know, there is no rules at all. You basically can be good. Uh, or as beginner as you want. So it's yeah. all about getting people who have never done it before into that racing scene with absolutely no pressure at all. You, know, you, you just rig up whatever sail you've got. It can be a wave sail. You'll be made welcome in it. It's really yes. welcoming. It's that stepping stone into yeah. racing. Yeah. I remember I did that event on yeah. my 3.7, my 120 litre board. And I, I can't remember where I came, but I really enjoyed it. Okay. Was like, that and that's just an out and back, isn't it? That, There's yes, no, technical, one no technical starts. No, it's exactly. just out and back and enjoy. Yeah, I did that okay. one. That was at the start of the season. Yeah. And then one at the end of the season. Yeah. Did that one. And the guy because that's what they do. They hold the first event yeah. here and the last event. Uh, this is at Weymouth, isn't it? Yeah, at Weymouth. So, okay. yeah. I remember, obviously, I didn't, didn't travel to other events. So I was yeah. just like, I'll just do it while I'm here. Yeah. And then I remember the last event, it was another windy one. And then the guy that runs the Master Blast, this guy called Brian. He's like, Brian. He's Brian. a character. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Brian, we love you, Brian. Yeah, I think we got, I mean, like, he was so supportive and, yeah. like, you never get down to the beach and he's, he's down on the beach with his scoreboard, ticking off when who comes in first, who comes in last. Yeah. There's never a day when you think, oh, that guy's not happy. He's no, just totally gross. Totally in love with the sport. And I remember that day, we had done so many races in the morning, so many, and to the point Brian was like, we can make the ice cream van out there. Yeah. So <laughs> They get an ice cream van. This is December so the 10th. So that's the uh, breakfast van. Oh, it's a breakfast van. Yeah. <laughs> it's that's slime and say. Food for down morning. here, look. Yeah. Right, okay. Yeah, and, um, so back on to it. Yeah, and then Brian went, right, it's getting trickier. So he basically stood in the water and became a human dive mark. So a second dive mark for us to leave. Yeah. So that, and I was like, okay, this is, I love this. This is, I want to just do more. And I remember the next season, I started my first amateur event on my own kit. And I was just like, okay, now this is another league. Like, jump out from the master blasters where it's a bit, it's more fun. It's more like just enjoy it. Yeah. And the amateurs, you've actually got races that are really good races that well, are going to push you. But more than that, as, as much as that, you've then got to learn the flag starting yeah. procedure. You've got to have the countdown. Yeah. Uh, so you've got to realize that they count down. So on a start, they basically raise flags, which count down time to the start. 
and you've got to work that out because get that wrong, don't you? Yeah. Bad start. I, I think my, <laughs> it's your race <laughs> over, isn't it? Yeah, my first event, I was so excited to do an amateur event. I got down to the beach, rigged up, went out, got to a start. And they're putting all these flags up on the boat, and I'm thinking, what's going on there? <laughs> and then I was like, asking the guys around me, like, I didn't really know, but they were like, oh, yeah, so this is obviously that flag there indicates it's the amateur fleet, that flag indicates it's the pro fleet. Then you've got a red for three, yellow for two, and then at one minute, yellow goes down, and then on zero, the green will go up. And I was like, oh, right, but I haven't got a watch. And I was like, right, okay, that's the first mistake. And I was like, right, you know what? Just follow everyone. That's all, you know, when I first started, I know how to watch. Uh, and that would be the same thing. You just look to the good guys. When yeah. they go, you yeah. go. You just follow them. Yeah. And that was it. And I, I think I, I spent the whole weekend just following. Yeah. And the thing is, I followed them always the first dive mark, and then I'll get around the first dive mark. Some people wouldn't. I'd be like, oh, I'm doing quite well now. And then like, you get to the second dive mark, and you fall in, or something would happen. And I was like, I think that, then that goal of trying to get more, to try and win that, was just like, that's my goal now. I want to win this. How long did it take? you to win the amateur series how many seasons i think probably after two i think so i think the first year i, was on, I thought on, it was two or three yeah, yeah I, was, I, I can't be 100 percent uh and i tell you what that yeah that that is that's pretty good going yeah. for someone who's come in cold that's yeah. pretty good going because it is a is a massive step forward it's it's you know it's it's not as serious as the as the pros uh but at the end of the day they the amateurs is about preparing you for the the, the, the pros and it is a yeah, big exactly. big step and uh, how old are you you'll be then 15 maybe 16 yeah 15 16 okay yeah i think 15 would be so do you know so yeah. you're still at school yeah yeah, yeah. And, and and you're doing yeah. this uh, uh by then so at what point then did you come on to Savern kit so that was i think my last season in the amateurs was on Savern kit so that's when tris approached me and said yep. right real what help you and then um, like i remember it was step just change like, wow like this guy like he's taught me the windsurf now now he's giving me some kits to use this is insane like, yeah. i remember unpackaging the boards i'm wrapping the yeah. thinking yeah. wow this is serious but like, the interesting thing is is and i can remember this uh vividly actually and i don't know why i can remember it vividly because but by then i i, I was out i was then doing the Severn thing so we were then hearing within these the halls of Severn, you know this scotty stallman's going to come on to Severn kit and the thing that stuck in my mind, not even knowing, I'd never met yet, I'd never met, and, um, and it's just like, okay, so here we have this young lad who uh, I've heard is absolutely out every day practicing. He's gonna be, he's gonna be good, he's good already. It's scary how quickly, how good you were, and it must be testament to the time that you put in practicing. It can only be that. Uh, you're then coming on to, to our kit and we're like, okay, this, this could be a game changer didn't realise it was going to be as, as big a game changer as it's been. So you go on a Severn kit, uh, and uh, then was that when you won? Yeah, the last so the last time you the won the season. amateurs. Yeah, so I remember that. It was the last season. Well, I didn't know it was my last season. Um, well, no, because once you win yeah. amateurs, you go to pros. Yeah, exactly. <clears throat> so just before we started that season, I remember this now, Al Cross turned around and said, try my Reflex 5s, give them a go. He gave me a whole quiver to try. Tried them and I was like, wow, these sales are amazing. That's it, I'll go to the. And like, obviously, you can see on social media, like Facebook, Instagram, all these guys that are riding the kit already. You're thinking, right, look at the pro fleet, these guys that are riding them. And it's just like, wow, okay, this kit's amazing. That's what I want to be. I think at that moment, uh, when Dunkerbeck came in with the reflex, uh, and he, he almost just took everything which had been done before, ripped it up, and said, we're going to try this. And uh, it was a massive, massive step forward as far as you had. You know, the the the, the uh, you know, back in the day of you know, pride uh race sales they were i always rated them really well super stable yeah. Shit when they weren't playing but once you got them going a bit like warps yeah. Yeah. super stable once you got them going uh but this reflex was a whole game changer uh quite twi I, I don't know how you found it i found it quite tweaky it, you had to get it right yeah. but if you got it in the sweet spot oh my god it's lovely so uh then you go to to, to max then because then max then come out yeah so yeah. you then move to to those how did you find uh what difference did they make going going on to those sales going fully so hand jump one make yeah so jumping from the reflexes to the max the first time i rolled it out rigged it up and i was like okay this feels a lot lighter in the hands it just rigged up a little bit easier i was like oh these sales are like there's never everything wrong i never didn't like the reflexes i rolled rob the mac and i was like wow this sale was amazing remember a bit of blue on it rigged it up <laughs> 
Freaked out. Um, I was just like, this is amazing. Yeah, it looks great. So yeah. neat. Oh, that looks like a trick. Yeah. yeah. And you haven't even rigged it up, but it's a good yeah. start when the sail looks good. Yeah. I was like, wow, that's amazing. Like, that's my second. <laughs> that's my, yeah, it's like start of my surfing career. I was like, wow, okay, this sound looks amazing. I'll just get on the water. Okay, so at that point, we're just going to break off for a moment. That is the end of part one. Look out for part two. It will be out very soon and it gets even more interesting.